is the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 89, for Monday, June 17, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Paddock Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. And then, there were 18. Hey, where did that last one sneak in? If you ask the question, how many states in the U.S. have legislation regarding MLTS PBX systems, most E911 professionals, including myself, would have answered with the number 17. In fact, that's the number published on the NINA website in their MLTS PBX section that tracks these various laws. Up until December of 2011, it was generally accepted that there were 16 recognized states. It was at this time that Michigan added themselves to the ranks of states requiring MLTS E911, although their enforcement efforts won't begin until January 1st, 2017. So what state is the mystery number 18? Well, I received a call this past week from a distributor in New Hampshire that explained to me that one of his university customers had received a letter from the state advising them of an E911 call that originated from their facility that only showed the main campus address. The letter continued to explain that the university was not in compliance with state regulations regarding MLTS PBX reporting on E911 calls. Well, my immediate reaction was, since New Hampshire didn't have MLTS legislation, there's got to be some kind of mistake somewhere. And that's when I started my quest for the truth. I started with the source of the mysterious letter from the state, and that led me directly to the source of the information, Timothy Scott. Tim is the data operations manager for the state of New Hampshire, Department of Safety, Division of Emergency Services and Communications. Sounds like a likely good place to start. But now the hard part. How was I going to call Mr. Scott and ask him why I never heard of the New Hampshire legislation, nor has Nina or anyone else in that matter in the industry? In fact, just recently at Nina 2012 in Long Beach, I had a discussion with Nina's Government Affairs Director, Trey Forgety, about the MLTS legislation status in the United States. And I can tell you, New Hampshire certainly didn't come up. Well, Mr. Scott took my call, although it was 4.45 at the end of a workday, and seemed happy to spend the time he needed to clarify his stance on MLTS E911. Hey, I'm starting to like this guy already. He stated that, quote, our policy, which is based on New Hampshire statutes and on standards published by NINA, is that for accurate geographical location where we require a unique city-style address for the structure where the telephone is located. He continued to say that, in addition, for structures that are greater than 40,000 square feet and or have multiple floors, must provide additional location information that will narrow down the geographic location of the telephone inside the building. So that all seems pretty logical to me and follows the standard of 40,000 square foot zones and each individual floor has to be its own emergency response location, as well as individual buildings. The New Hampshire statutes that he referenced were as follows. New Hampshire Revised Statute Annotated 378-17-C. Non-public utility providers of telephone services using a PBX switch or similar equipment shall be considered telephone utilities for the purposes of RSA 106-8-8. Non-utility providers of telephone services shall comply with the telephone utility requirements of RSA 106-8-8 no later than January 1st, 2007. Okay, great, that's easy. If you operate a PBX, you're considered a non-public utility, and the statute that is applicable to utilities is also applicable to you. So let's look at RSA 106 colon H-8. It states that each telephone service provider shall assure that all requests for police, fire, medical, or other emergency services received by the provider or the provider's operator services shall be transferred to the public safety answer point. Such transfer shall include the calling party's telephone number in American Standard Code for Information Exchange, that's ASCII, and in a format recommended for data exchange by NINA key part of this is the calling party's number. And that's what has to be transmitted to the PSAP. There's another statute, RSA 106-H colon 2, Section 7, defines the enhanced 911 system and enhanced 911 services as 
a system consisting of selective routing with the capability of automatic number and location identification at a public safety answering point, which enable users of the public telecommunication system to request emergency services by dialing the digits 911. So when you put all this together, as far as the state of New Hampshire is concerned, each phone number is required to have accurate location information, including apartment, suite, and floor information. Now, just in case that wasn't enough to convince you, Mr. Scott also reminded me that the Americans with Disabilities Act requires all public and private institutions to provide the handicap with the same level of services as the general public has available. And that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, may consider failing to adopt E911 with additional location information as evidence that an institution did not maintain a hazard free environment for guests or employees. That's certainly something we've heard from various segments of our legal community before. He concluded with based on this, it would be his agency's belief that failure to provide enhanced 911 services would be a violation of federal law. Well, those are some pretty strong words from the little state of New Hampshire, and I commend them on that. So there you have it, 18 down, 32 to go. Welcome to the club, New Hampshire. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency?